now. We're going to go home dreaming about green party Oreo cookies tonight. And so uh, we have one of those wafers about to come up right now, who uh, many of you already know and love, uh, because of course she has been very active in the community here and very beloved. And it's wonderful that you all came here tonight. And uh, I, she probably needs some introduction. So ladies and gentlemen, Councillor Adrian Carr. <laughs> changes move forward, we remember how precious this planet is and how incredibly important it is to keep runs of salmon alive forever, uh, to make sure that we have a clean environment, that really our quality of life, our health, our economy are absolutely fundamentally based in. Um, let me first though thank everyone who also helped with this event. I'm not sure if you know, but this is an entirely volunteer organization and an entirely volunteer prepared event. So thank you for those who came a little early and saw us still putting out auction items um, and, uh, and food. It, I had, it's an amazing team. And I think probably most of them who put in a huge amount of work, I know Dawn Bartell, uh, who is sitting right here, emailed me or texted me at 3.02 a.m. this morning uh, to say I'm three quarters done printing the, <laughs> Of the, uh, 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 the flyers, so you know, it's, it's an amazing group. Jackie, um, who's just left our, she didn't introduce herself as the chair of the Green Party of Vancouver Board, but um, do, introduce it, um, do introduce yourself to her. And other members of the board that are here, Jordan um, Bover, who is, um, I don't know, actually, maybe he's in the other room, they're probably all handling work. Paul George, Paul? Uh, <laughs> yes, they're all handling, they're all handling. Just, just, just noting the members of our board, Kevin McEwen. Um, anyway, when you see them and see their name tags, make sure you thank them uh, for all that they do. <laughs> so, this is almost the first year anniversary of my election, um, which was November 19th, as a date I will never forget, November 19th. Uh, 2011, and you know, I was so, so excited to have Elizabeth elected. I mean, that was a thrilling moment in the history of the Green Party and all the work we put into it. Um, so, <laughs> uh, and so her, thank her for um, coming, making time in her incredible schedule to uh, to make it here tonight. But it was such an amazing victory. And I sort of then thought to myself, well, what next? And all sorts of people said, well, run locally, which I did, and let me tell you what a campaign that was. Um, and uh, and I have to say, you know, it is it, to win by 91 votes was a bit of a nail biter. And <laughs> on the last you poll, on the last poll reporting, yes, I know we were just, and you know, it was kind of an anxious thing because we were all crowded in our campaign office, and all the cameras were pulled. Well, one camera, um, <laughs> the one who bought the news of the night and then stole it to every other station. Uh, but uh, polls, just to poise there uh, to get the reaction. It took 45 minutes for that poll to report. Uh, and uh, when it finally happened, oh my God, Paul McCarr, um, who is um, actually volunteering, uh, sorry, volunteering, donating to our uh, live auction, can't be here tonight, but uh, she was the one who announced She's in! And I'll never forget that moment. Um, I love it. I love being elected. And I love being elected for a number of reasons. Um, I feel effective. I feel that it's important that I'm there at the council table. And I know if I wasn't there, 
There would be issues that aren't raised. There would be sort of ways forward that would be different. Um, and even as one green, I am managing to have an impact um, in terms of motions passed. So let me tell you what it's like. Um, the first day uh, in City Hall, I, uh, I was very pleasantly surprised by Elizabeth Ball of the NPA coming up to me and saying, Adrian, um, last term, uh, there was a problem with Suzanne Antoine getting any motions seconded, so I will second any of your motions so that at least the debate can happen. And I am grateful to her for that because um, because of that, I put motions on the table. I think it makes vision sometimes very uncomfortable that I put them on the table because it pushes things, but sometimes they find it very hard to say no once they've got it on the table. And so about two thirds of my motions have been passed. side and the other side is saying, especially if it's a vision motion and the NBA are bringing up a legitimate point of view, I'm very proud of the fact that I you know, managed to put amendments in that then get accepted and we end up getting consensus at the council table. Uh, I think that's what we should be working at. In fact, I think we should be working at consensus in our city. And the fact that we don't have it, I think speaks loudly and clearly that we are not, the city is not, engaging citizens, listening to citizens, and incorporating what they have to say in the decisions made at the council table enough. Else what we would have is people coming to council saying thank you. Thank you for that motion. Thank you for that piece of, of, of policy. Because it makes sense from our point of view. I think democracy and development are two critical issues, and I think both are not headed down the right path right now. The reason I say that is because motion after, especially in the public hearings, public hearing after public hearing, some of them go well, but then when controversial topics come up, citizens come forward, and in the majority, Say, this is not what we want. The rise development, the high rise development in Mount Pleasant, 1401 Comox in the West End, 955 East, East uh, Hastings in the downtown east side. There's a quite a list. And there's a majority of people, and when they say no, and in some cases they're not saying no, not ever, they're saying it's almost there, just give us a bit more time. Little Mountain Housing was another perfect example, I know, Ned Jacobs is here. And it was so close to being something that the local community could really get behind. It was a small change that needed to take place. And there was an inability of my fellow council members to listen to those changes that would not have markedly altered, I think, the developer's end of the project, but instead would have made such a difference in terms of bringing down the height a little in that development that would have brought that community on board and we would have had just such a win-win and we didn't get it. So time after time, I'm faced with decisions and let me tell you what goes through my head. What goes through my head is exactly what I promised you. In running for office, I said to you with every decision, I will think of these things. Does this decision put people first? People ahead of developers. Does this decision reflect the community plans and the zoning that currently exists, which I believe is like a social contract between the city and the people who live in it? Does it, does it allow that, that plan developed by people to move forward in a fruitful way in that neighborhood, honoring the work that's been put into it and the vision that's in those plans? Number three, does this decision move us forward on um, a path to solving some of the bigger issues? And I'll come back to that. Some of the bigger issues like global warming, climate change, like 
unaffordable housing, and poverty in our city. And does this decision leave our, our children better off in the city? I would run every decision that I make by that screen in my head before I make the decision. And if I don't feel that democracy is honored, if I don't feel that the people have bought in knowing that it does indeed uh, create in the decision a better neighborhood, a better future for their children, um, a response to the major problems we're facing, then I won't vote for something. Or I'll, I actually always start by trying to amend it. Or at minimum, um, seeing if I can't get the motion deferred so that more discussion can take place and a better solution happen. Um, and you know what I get back from the vision counselors is there's no time. We don't have time. Uh, we have to move on. We've been, this is so urgent and that's so urgent. I think what is so urgent that you ignore democracy? What is so there is nothing that is so urgent that you can't take a couple of more weeks, and that's all that some people have asked for, a couple of more weeks of consultation um, so that they can feel that their input gets incorporated into the decision. We have to get democracy right at the same time as we also get development right. So. We just had the Mayor's Task Force on Housing Affordability come back to the table um, for, for decisions um, without real public discussion or consultation over what the um, outcome decisions might be, and in the decisions embedded huge, major changes to the city, including an interim rezoning policy that upzoned every arterial in the whole city, every arterial that a bus runs down, uh, plus 100 meters on the other side of it, every shopping strip plus 500 meters around it, uh, to higher density, um, to six stories from four in most cases, that's, that's what four stories is what it's, where it's at. But the most incredibly egregious thing is that that upzoning, that interim zoning policy came in without it being taken, neighborhood by neighborhood, area by area in the city, to have a discussion about whether this was right or wrong, um, whether it fit in their neighborhood plan or not, what it would mean in terms of the kind of development that they would start seeing along the arterials and the streets off those arterials in the neighborhoods that people live in. Um, so I, you know, I, I tried to delay it, failed, um, and, uh, and, and then voted, voted against that. Uh, to which I get from, from my vision colleagues, um, oh, Adrian Carr's against housing. Well, what nonsense that is. Um, it, it, you know, because you want to get housing right, because you want to make sure uh, that, uh, that the housing that gets built is housing that actually works for people and in the neighborhoods that we have. And you, you're willing to fight and wait to get that doesn't mean you're against housing. I fought endlessly to get a definition of affordable housing that's consistent yeah. in this city. The ballpark and the, the, the goalposts keep changing. First it was, you know, so it was social housing. Affordable housing was to help those who were most at need. Uh, then it becomes housing within a certain uh, income bracket from 21,000 to 84,000. And a lot of it, I think, at the upper end. Then it becomes, oh, all rental housing is affordable. Well, this is not the way to do planning. This is not the way to ensure that there is affordable housing. Um, you need to have a very clear and well-defined definition or well-defined objective in order to know how much progress you're making toward it. If you're not making progress, it's no good to then say, oh, well, you know, now it's all rental and now we've made progress. I mean, I, I think changing your definition in order to say that you're achieving it is the, is the wrong way to go. You know, you need to be very clear about what you're going for. If you're not getting there, then you try harder. You find different ways around it. You don't change the goal. In terms of, um, of the uh, uh, climate change issue, which I must admit is the biggest issue that we all face, um, there are several things that make me feel so good about the fact that I'm at that council table. 
We just passed Council Pass. I didn't vote for all the pieces of it. Um, the Transportation 2040 plan. But interestingly, that plan, which was years in the work, came forward and with an objective of two thirds of trips in the city, two thirds being by transit, foot, or cycling by 2040. That sounds good, right? And I asked the question, but if we have increased population and we have more trips overall, could we not end up with more car trips? Than, even though it's a lower percentage, more car trips in total and more greenhouse gases than we started off with. So we may have a, you know, a, a objective that says we're going to move more people into other modes of, of transportation. But overall, if especially we're a city that's destined to build, 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 which is what I see, not one development proposal has been turned down. Well, I didn't have the council table. So if it's build, 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 we get more cars, we get more people, um, then we're not going to end up in any way combating climate change. So I asked, I amended the, the, uh, the, the motion and ask that, that, that an equal objective be that we actually have in our transportation plan um, the objective of reducing greenhouse gas emissions um, so that we would meet greenhouse gas emission reduction targets by 2040, 33% um, below 2007 levels. So, um, so at least we would know that we are and simultaneously getting there. So, um, Without me, would that have been on the table? Probably not. I mean, it's, it sort of makes you realize that electing one green can make a difference. And actually, <laughs> um, my final example that I want to give is, is the issue of the tankers. Is the issue of the, of the pipelines and whether those tankers will go under that uh, 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 second Narrows and past Lionsgate and Stanley Park in increasing numbers over time. And I did put forward a motion early on in, um, in uh, my, my term in council in February um, that was kind of testing the waters and it was more to do around public consultation ensuring that if Kinder Morgan didn't put um, public consultation, robust public consultation, by the way, I'm getting to loathe that word, um, and the reason is I just went to Kinder Morgan's little little uh, you know PR show last night, where it was a lot of storyboards, and you know really there wasn't any real. I mean, what do you think? And if you answered, well, I really don't want this project, <laughs> any consideration of your point of view. So there wasn't any two-way discussion, and I hate those rooms where people don't get to hear each other's questions and don't get to simultaneously hear the answers. That are put forward. Anyway, there already is consultation, um, but my motion was to get the consultation, and then we moved forward quite quickly. And I saw that the park board was going to put forward a uh, motion against the Kinder Morgan project. So I actually met with the mayor and said, um, "What do you think about this same motion coming forward to the council table?" And his first response to me was, well, you know, actually, I think it's okay at Park Board. I mean, they've got the problems with Stanley Park and the beaches and that kind of thing. And I said, Gregor, I really feel like this needs to be at the council table. And I'm willing to put that motion forward. But I'd be much happier to, uh, to support a motion from you on this, because I think it's better for the issue. He put a motion in. Uh, so, uh, so you know, and, you know, again, I think it's it's that's also, a, I guess, for me, a gratifying piece of being elected. It's it's realizing that there is you know an ability to work uh, with others and uh, to push the agenda and to get some things through and to stand up for people because really you deserve. Every counselor should be this. You deserve a council that stands up for you first. They have a developers of any other interests, it's the citizens' interests that count the most. And uh, and so I, I um, will say right now, I intend to pursue um, the, this job further uh, and run again if you would uh, end up nominating me in the future. Um, and. <laughs> Thank you.
I would like to see in the next election more greens at on council, more greens in the park board, in the school board. Is Stuart McKinnon here? Did Stuart? Stuart is here. Oh, stand up, Stuart. Stuart McKinnon. Park Board Commissioner last term, and I did have a conversation with him. If, if there is indeed a, a by-election, which we may have at the Park Board, I think that we may have a willing candidate in Stewart, and I believe we can get Stewart elected. Yes. And Louise Bhutan, too, who ran for Park Board, I mean for School Board, where's Louise? She's probably busy in the kitchen. I think she, there she is, she came out of the kitchen. You know, next time, uh, what would be wonderful for me is if, uh, you know, we could just increase that margin a little bit more than 91 folks. So and one thing you could do is go out and talk to everybody you know about getting active in this campaign, uh, in the next time around getting active in a by-election, um, uh, should a by-election uh, uh, come our way for the park board, uh, and make sure that, um, that tonight, you take advantage of the opportunity to help us get some really basic things. Like when you bid on the, on the final auction items or on the live auction, which is about to come, what you are going to help us do is get banners. We don't even have Green Party banners right now. We, you know, last time I won that campaign on $14,000 compared to $3.4 million that was spent by the NPA and $3.2 million uh, by Vision. 14,000. Well, I'd like a little bit more this time, too. <laughs> and some banners would be nice. Uh, so, you know, you could really, tonight, um, with your generosity through the, through the auction, really, really make a difference in positioning up for a very much stronger, um, you know, Oreo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. And I think we're going to have questions and answers later on. Okay, I'm going to come to Chip Adrian. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, that was a perfect lead-in for me. Thank you, Adrian, because I am the auctioneer. So, as we all know, these uh, great uh, things that are going on, for the Green Party to grow and expand, you heard those numbers. Uh, that's astounding to me. I'm an auctioneer. I do this. I do fundraising for all sorts of charities. So the uh, vision and NPA, 3.2 million, using three, two, two or three million dollars at their fundraisers. So let's do that tonight. Yeah. <laughs>